fine let me go to your navigator okay let me show you how to create a new person so go to your navigator so you don't need to go to your implementation projects go to your navigator and then in that you have something like my workforce and you have something like person here okay so how you are getting this new person or how you are getting all this is these are all dependent on the roles you assign to an employee okay so if an if only employee role is given to him the employee can do whatever the things that he want like about me or kind of a thing like he can see all these features thing but if at all i add something like an functional setup user or if i add a role kind of an uh, implementation consultant or implementation manager then those people can go and hire a particular person from this navigator okay that that roles and all we will see next week that's where we see in security but for now if at all you have assumed that we are having a role for this person and then i can create click on new person link and create a new person your roles can be like your payroll manager benefit manager hr specialist hr administrator so there are so many roles depending on the roles you get uh, those accessibilities in that navigator okay let me click on new hire okay so now let me keep the same date now if you go to the action type now you can see hire may 14 here okay if you choose the action type you can see the reason that i have just defined right now okay so if at all you want to go for your custom action types if at all you want to go for seeded things go for your seeded action types and this will be common to any country any legislator or anything okay fine let me choose this uh let me give a legal employer here so your legal employer your legal entity all this will come up based on the uh, entities that you have set up in the system so let me choose um, us one legal entity so worker number generated automatically because uh, at your uh, uh, hcm information or at your legal entity information i have given the worker number to be generated as automatically okay and worker type is employee because i went and clicked on new employee link i did not go for any contingent worker uh, so when you uh, danish this is right yeah uh, when you chose the legal employer it automatically created a employee number you say right so at legal entity level we have uh, given like uh, uh, what is the worker number whether it's automatic or manual or what is the person number whether automatic or manual so whatever the setups we have done at that particular level those uh -huh. will be reflected here so if you it's showing on the screen i don't see uh, employee numbers showing on the no, screen no no it once we save it you can see a number here but here oh, okay. is showing the message like generate generated automatically you can see oh. the person number also generated automatically if okay. at all you have given the option there as manual it will say that manual number or something okay. like that okay. so you have to give the number there so if it is uh, worker number generation is manual then you will get a, an additional field here for yeah. the user to input the uh, employee number exactly exactly okay. we will get an uh, free text field where we need to enter the number here okay, okay. so employee so give the last name okay let's say kashish will give him Kashish, okay. Yeah. Uh, first name can be like I say Kumar. So title is uh, Mr. Okay, and then your title is again a lookup. If at all you want to say for your US or UK legal entities, you want to give like for country specific, you want to give a different uh, titles or anything, you can you can go to a lookup. so how you can uh, search for it lookup you can go to the task called manage lookups there you can uh, directly go and check for this particular you can add uh, titles in that okay so prefix suffix this middle names this honors you can give then come down you have something like a gender here so give them as a name one um, let me give us 1990 okay reward points and export this passport these are your dffs okay we, we are creating a new person right exactly we are creating a new employee and, and uh, a new employee and uh, the date of birth is not mandatory field no it's like uh, it's mandatory it's not uh, the star mark is not there but uh -huh. if at all this employee needs to be processed in the payroll the two 
fields which are mandatory for your payroll processing is employee and then legal employee sorry date of birth and legal employee okay so but it's not mentioning here but it's mandatory employee uh, if at all you, are, you want to only maintain a person record then it's not mandatory even though you don't give the employee number that is fine but if at all you want to process this employee in the payroll uh, date of birth is mandatory but for creation purposes, the date of birth man, uh, is not mandatory, you say? Man, non-mandatory. Okay. And one more thing is like uh, uh, whenever you go to that enterprise HCM information, there you have retirement ages. Okay, what is your retirement age? What is your uh, minimum working age of an employee, maximum working age of an employee? If, that, if you are trying to enter any values there, then this becomes mandatory again. Because based on the information that you have added, for example, you said minimum working age of an employee is 18. Then how the system will calculate whether uh, how that age should be calculated based on the yeah, data. Exactly. Uh -huh. So that is where if you enter, if you try to leave the blanks there, this doesn't, this becomes non-mandatory. But if you try to enter some information there, this becomes mandatory. Uh, well, uh, I'm not uh, too much uh, 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 from the uh, functional background, but uh, mm -hmm. is it in uh, the same issue with uh, uh, Vanilla HCM, HRMS? Right, yes, it is. Is the same? Yep, it's the same. Data of birth is not mandatory. Right, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, because you have a star mark for your last name, but you don't have it here. So, at least if you don't enter, system will give you a warning, but it will not uh, throw any error message saying that you have to mandatorily enter the date of birth. It will give you a warning saying that if at all you don't enter a date of birth, you cannot process this person in payroll or something like that, but it will only stop till warning. But if at all you are trying to give your retirement age, minimum working age, maximum working age, then it becomes a mandatory. It says that you have mentioned your minimum working age as age 18, but you are not trying to mention any date of birth so that uh, the system will not know how to calculate the age of for this particular employee. Okay, so those are all your validations. You can always validate things. Fine. Coming back, you have your national identifiers. If at all, uh, you can add, uh, if at all it's US, you can use your assistant number. If at all you are UK, you will give your national identifier. Uh, I'm not sure what for India it is. So this is the unique identifier you will give it. Okay. Aadhaar card. Yeah, Aadhaar card maybe. So if it is, this is again non-mandatory. Okay. Dhanas, can you open that uh, passport lookup? Sure. Which lookup? XX, XX passport in the previous okay. screen. So these are your DFFs. That means if at all you want to create your own fields in this particular form, you can go and uh, configure your DFFs. And based on the value sets that we have given in that values for DFF, this will be coming up. Okay, so that uh, configuration will be done in a separate uh, screen? Yeah, separate. Yeah, so tomorrow I'll show you how we will do a configuration with this level. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think uh, XX passport is a custom field, right? Yeah, this is custom field, that's what. This custom field have been configured in your DFF. Okay. This is not an seeded field given by Oracle. This is a custom field. Someone have configured uh, DFF. Uh, they want to show the passport, uh, some details of passport in an employee form. So that's the reason they have configured it. But if you go, if you want to hide these fields, you can definitely go and do it at your DFF level. Okay. So click on next. Fine. So this is your personal information. Now you see that this person is under legal entity, generated automatically. Okay. And um, you have all these as uh, hire and everything. So now let me give you your address. So let me say. Ashish, um, personal address, no. Okay, so I'll not give any districts. Now you can enter his phone details phone details about caches like mobile or if you want to enter the pager number, home phone or anything you can just go and do it. You can enter this and you can enter the country code and you can enter the area code and you can also enter the number. Okay, so this, this all depends how you want to enter capture his phone details. Okay, and your email address 
is one of the mandatory part. Why we say it is mandatory? You don't see any star mark here, but we say this is mandatory because. So as I told you in the previous sessions, like uh, always, your user will be by default created. Okay, as in I don't know what people saw. As an EPS, we don't go and exclusively create a user. So in Fusion, what happens is your um, um, whenever you try to hire an employee, by default the user gets created. So, but what is the format? What is the user name that gets uh, get generated? Okay, how it will uh, how the user name will be generated? So by default, the standard way of generating the user name is through your uh, uh, email address. That means if, it, if at all I give something like kashish.kumar at the rate gmail as uh, the email address here. So whenever you save and submit this particular employee and once this employee gets created in the system, if you go, I'll show you a place where you can see his user details as well. Okay, then you see kashish.kumar as the username. So from next time onwards, whenever you want to go and log in with kashish, when you, uh, kashish wants to log in himself, he has to give his username. And this is a default and a standard one. But if your client says, no, I don't want to maintain this email address, I don't, I want to maintain like uh, the first letter of the last name, and uh, we should be uh, included with the first name kind of a thing, like uh, if it is like Ashish Kumar, Kumar, then it, it should be K Kumar. Okay, that should, that kind of a format I want to follow. Then you have to go to something like your Oracle Identity Manager, then you have the formats of uh, setting up your uh, usernames. There, whatever the format you want, you can go and change it. This is one that for all the employees in the same format, your username will be created. Okay, but for now, we are in the vision instance, so in vision instance always takes the default one. So we have, we will follow something like your uh, email address. Uh, we'll yeah. uh, Danish, uh, so when you set up the email format in uh, OIM, uh, that mm -hmm. would be propagated to any uh, legal entity, right? Right, any legal entity. That means I am doing it local, uh, legal entity, uh, sorry, I am doing it OM means I will say that for the complete enterprise I have to follow one structure. Okay. Okay, so I will give the email address. I will always take work email address. It will not take your personal email address. It will take your work email address. So I will say kashish.kumar at the rate gmail.com so you can come down, so this is your uh, country specific details, okay, so this is for US, so let me say that this guy is married one, and um, so I'll just give these details, and the rest of the details, I'm not sure about those details, but these are very specific to your US country, okay, so if at all you want to uh, add your details or you want to do anything, you can just go and set up these details here, and then if at all Kashish have a contact type, like um, spouse or children are there, you can also set up the contacts here. Just go and click on the contact as spouse. And you can define the spouse details. Okay, so I'll say, um, say ABC here. This is fine, I'll just give this. And then I can give an, uh, a phone number. Okay, and then I can, these, these details are required. And then you can just go upstairs, click on next. So now we have just captured his personal information. Okay, now we will go through his employment information. Okay, so now here you see there is only one assignment. Okay, so there is nothing like your employment terms. That means by default for this particular enterprise, Oracle have set up only two tier model. Okay, in uh, I told you right for uh, uh, like two tier model, only your work relationship will be there. Your work relationship is this, like legal entity, you will have, you will always capture your business unit and everything here. Apart from that, you will have only something like your assignment. You will not have anything like your employment terms. Okay. Now, if at all I want to change it, I can change it. Okay. You have to go back to that HCM information and you have to change that thing to your three-tier employment model. Fine, so coming back, your assignment number will be automatically generated. So this is blank right now, you give your uh, business unit.
okay your assignment status is uh, add to payroll so here is the place where you can change your assignment status so whether it is an inactive or active so how it is you can directly go and change your status of here okay so come down so you can add the job to him and then next week when we will be discussing about your uh, uh, security and all we can always assign something like your uh, roles to a particular job as well okay for example i say that okay if this person is an uh, hr specialist to hr specialist there should be default role should be automatically added that is something like your job roles we call it as so for every hr specialist we will try to assign some default role so automatically if i assign uh hr specialist to this guy i'll go to the next form and i'll show you how the roles will be automatically attached okay it also depends on your job that you select for any employee your roles get also gets auto uh, provisioned okay so i'll say human resources okay i'm just adding your home human resources specialist and always remember hr specialist is the top level guy okay who can do anything in the application something like in uh, uh, in ebs we call it as a super hrms manager or we call it as super user who have all the controls over the application in the same way in fusion hr specialist is the person or uh, who is an ultimate owner and hr if we assign him as a hr specialist then he can do anything in the application okay but what i mean to say here is like uh, if at all you have an uh, job and then you want to automatically assign some roles to that particular job you can definitely do it whether it's an hr specialist or finance specialist anything you want to auto provision that roles to that particular job it is always uh, available in future okay so now um, for your job let me give you a grade so you can add each and everything for your jobs and everything and how your grades will be displayed is whenever you try to create a uh, grade then you whenever you try to uh, create your job next to your grade then you will attach and valid grades to that particular job so that means for this particular job whatever you see here are all the valid grades okay you can just queue sales executive or anything like that and uh, you can see um, you are uh, this is getting defaulted 40 hours i did not enter these things right these are these are getting defaulted so how these are getting defaulted it can be either from your legal entity wise or it can be from your department i did not add any department also so this work hours will by default get defaulted either from your enterprise or from your legal entity i think at that legal entity level we have already defined so that's the reason this is getting defaulted